Hi, I'm Elaine Mills with Master Gardeners of Northern Virginia, here today to talk about two invasive plants, Chinese and Japanese wisteria. When I use the term invasive, I'm using it as officially defined in two executive orders. Executive Order 13112, signed by President Clinton in 1989, and 13751, signed by President Obama in 2016. Those two orders state that an invasive plant is one that is not native to the area where it is found growing. It can escape from cultivation and its various parts, whether they be seeds, roots, and so forth, can spread and thereby cause harm either to the economy, the environment, or to the health of humans, animals, or other plants. Chinese and Japanese wisteria are two similar looking vines that were introduced to the United States in 1816 and 1830 respectively for ornamental use. Since that time, they've been favored for their rapid growth, dense foliage, and fragrant blossoms. Unfortunately, these two plants are now designated as invasive in 19 states, ranging from New England through the Mid-Atlantic into the Southeast and as far west as Texas. And they pose a management challenge to national parks in Maryland, Virginia, and the District of Columbia. Non-native wisterias escape landscape plantings to create infestations in natural areas such as roadsides, rights of way, and forest edges when their seeds are carried to these sites. Most often, they reproduce vegetatively by sending out runners that grow horizontally along the ground, which then develop new plants at the nodes. When they spread in this manner, wisterias form dense thickets, smothering and shading out native vegetation. Asian wisterias are especially problematic in forests where they wind around the trunks of host trees. They can add weight to these trees, making them susceptible to storm damage and breakage. Over time, their tight growth will also cut through the bark of the host trees, girdling and killing them. Invasive wisterias can be quite a challenge to control as they can grow up to 60 feet into trees. The base of these vines can measure as much as 15 inches in diameter. This example here at the historic Ball Cellars home is even larger. The method of control for these vines will depend on the particular circumstances where you find them. If the vines are growing up a tree, what you want to do is to cut the vine close to the base, maybe about two inches above the ground, and to immediately apply a concentrated herbicide to that cut surface. That will begin to kill the invasive vine while protecting the host tree. If on the other hand, you're dealing with a sprawling ground level infestation, you may need to use a foliar spray. That would be preferable to using manual or mechanical controls, which might disrupt the surrounding soil. Luckily, there are several wonderful native alternatives to invasive Chinese and Japanese wisteria. The first alternative I'm going to suggest to replace the invasive Asian wisterias is American wisteria, Wisteria frutensis. This is a climbing twining vine. It has charming dark purple flower buds early in the spring set against compound foliage that you see here. What's so attractive about the buds is that they look like miniature pine cones. They will open up into these drooping flower clusters uh, in April and May, and the flower clusters range in color from lilac, uh, lavender, and deep purple, and they're very attractive to bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds for their nectar. Because this plant is in the pea family, these will later develop into dangling pods. American wisteria can grow 15 to 30 feet. It's a vigorous plant, but nowhere near as aggressive as the invasive Chinese species. 
This plant is particularly attractive on arbors and trellises, as well as on fences, as you see here in our Glen Carlin demonstration garden. This particular vine will grow in sun to part shade, although it does its best flowering in full sun. Its moisture requirements are moist to wet soil, and in fact, it will tolerate a range from drought to seasonal flooding. In addition, this plant is fairly deer tolerant. The second native alternative I'm recommending is purple passion flower, Passiflora incarnata, a tendril climbing deciduous vine that can reach six to eight feet high with a spread of three to six feet. This striking ornamental plant can be used on arbors, fences, and walls, or on slopes for erosion control. The vine's outstanding feature is its fragrant three-inch purple flowers, which bloom from May to October. These exotic blossoms are crowned with wavy filaments and showy stamens and stigmas that attract bees and butterflies for pollen and nectar. You can see the pollen coating the back of this carpenter bee as it circles the central column. Passionflower also serves as the larval host for the gulf and variegated fritillary butterflies. Another interesting feature is passionflower's edible egg-shaped fruit called maypops. These ripen to yellow-green for harvest midsummer into fall and can be eaten fresh or cooked. This plant is easily grown in full sun and moist, well-drained soil and has moderate deer resistance. We're here in my home garden in Northern Virginia to introduce the third native alternative to the invasive wisterias. This particular plant is a shrub rather than a vine, but it's a great substitute because of its lovely fragrance. This delightful shrub is Calicanthus floridus, known as either sweet shrub or Carolina allspice. It grows about six to nine feet tall with a spread in a vase shape of about six to 12 feet. It has lovely lustrous leaves. You can see them here along with the opening buds. Here's a close up look at the flowers. They have very interesting strap like tepals. They're maroon in color and are pollinated by beetles. You can see the beginning of the formation of the fruit. A particularly popular cultivar of Calicanthus floridus is the Athens cultivar. It has a yellow green color, the same strap like shape to the flowers. These are particularly long lasting and very fragrant with a tropical scent somewhat reminiscent of strawberries, citrus, and banana. You can also see the interesting urn shaped fruit. Whichever of these three native alternatives you choose to replace invasive Chinese and Japanese wisteria, I wish you happy gardening.